in a recent video, I audaciously claimed, nay, proved whales were buying Bitcoin under $58,000. <laughs> under 50,000, everyone's bought under 58. But the question remains, if they were presented with the opportunity again, would they continue to do so? Well, in today's video, I will answer exactly that. Yeah, I think they would. Now, before you click off this video thinking that the interesting part is over, au contraire, I actually completely underestimated just how much buying recently took place, just how hard these whales aped in. It was almost unlike anything Bitcoin has ever seen before. Allow me to show you why and why I think they are doing this. Because I believe buyers can see the writing on the wall. The wall of money. It sounded cooler in my head. First up, how big was this accumulation? The following comes from blockchain analytics firm Glassnode. This chart plots the amount of Bitcoin that was moving around at certain price points. So we can see the most amount of Bitcoin that was moved was between the 3.5K levels, which signaled the bottom of the bear market. Second, at the 9K levels. And recently, we saw a lot of popularity between forty-six dollars and $48,000. Not all that interesting at first glance. But I assure you, this is mind-blowing. Bitcoin spent months, if not an entire year in total at some of these price levels, giving people ample time to transact. We spent just days at these price levels. The fact that this much movement was recorded on chain is staggering. Is it good for Bitcoin or has it peaked? Peaked? Peaked, D? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I haven't even begun to peak. You'll be surprised to learn that it is in fact good for Bitcoin. The reason being that technically, if people were all taking their Bitcoin out of their hardware wallets to sell on exchanges, it would produce a similar result on this chart. But that's not what we're seeing. In fact, we're seeing the exact opposite, a literal mass exodus of Bitcoin from exchanges to personal wallets. In addition, we can clearly see that it is little <laughs> That it is whales behind the bulk of this activity as orders for Bitcoin over $100,000 at a time, colored in purple, or Bitcoin orders over a million dollars, colored in brown, recently hit all-time highs. Therefore, we can quite confidently say that the $48,000 level was one of the very biggest accumulation zones in the entirety of Bitcoin history. I've never seen something so crazy happening on chain in all my years of analyzing. I feel like I'm sounding like an old man. Crypto can rapidly age you. But why are they doing this? I'll share a wild theory with you first. The Oracle connection. One of Fang's looked down upon compatriots in Silicon Valley is old tech giant Oracle. They got a bad rep because their main revenue model is that of charging egregious licensing fees from these other guys. But regardless of how they make their money, Oracle is among the top 100 largest companies in the entire United States. But why am I telling you this? The rumors are that they are the ones who are accumulating. Main stoke for this rumor fire, the company CEO, Larry Ellison, listed as the sixth wealthiest man in the world, is also a member of the board of Tesla, who, as you may know, recently acquired a ton of big... However, you may chalk this up entirely to fake news. Their quarterly earnings report was yesterday and there was no mention of any Bitcoin. So why am I covering this now? I think the rumors are not going to go away anytime soon. Their quarterly report did not go well. It didn't seem the market took the no Bitcoin thing very well. And the memes have already begun. But interestingly, if their purchase of Bitcoin commenced very recently, it might not have made it into this quarterly earnings report, especially if the accumulation had not even yet been completed. Now, I'm not getting my hopes up. I'll believe it when I see it, but the connection is a solid one. So I definitely expect the rumors to continue to swirl. So who is accumulating and will they continue to do so? The Soros Fund and Morgan Stanley, among others, invest $200 million in NYDIG, a Bitcoin investment firm. It's very telling that George Soros, one of the most successful financiers in the world, has a fund that is getting involved in Bitcoin. But why are they bullish on NYDIG? To answer that, here's a clip of Michael Saylor talking to their CEO. 
We've got over $6 billion in Bitcoin now between what's in the door and what's committed from institutions. And we are vanguardizing this asset class. And by the end of the year, Michael, I am confident we'll have over $25 billion of Bitcoin. I've just got this order book. I'm not guessing. I see what's happening. So he reckons after all this accumulation we've recently seen that they are still set to increase their Bitcoin holdings by a factor of four. Who, who exactly is that coming from? You have tremendous visibility into what all sorts of institutions are, are doing and how they're adopting Bitcoin. So what can you tell us? Well, I mean, the, the, the one liner is all kinds of institutions are adopting Bitcoin, public companies, private companies, hedge funds, private equity funds, credit for funds. I mean, even investors who, if you asked me a year ago, would they come in? I'd say absolutely not. The most conservative, but also the most sophisticated, most careful investors in the world, triple A, and AA life insurance companies, AA PNC insurance companies today have more than $500 million of Bitcoin exposure through NIDIG. And I know for sure, because I'm not guessing. And these institutions want to do more. I'm kind of speechless. Further corroborating this evidence is a recent report from Goldman Sachs. They claim that 40% of their institutional clients currently have exposure to cryptocurrencies. Goldman Sachs, they want to hold my racks. Sorry, that was just my uh, phone's playlist connected to the TV. Sick line though, mad respect. It was a sick line. And that 61% of them expect our holdings to increase this year. So in conclusion, we are seeing a mass accumulation, primarily under $50,000 from institutional investors of all sectors, which according to multiple reports, look set to continue. I foresee Bitcoin getting harder and harder to ignore from any business not currently holding any. Cash increasingly being looked at as a liability and Bitcoin being a safer and safer bet. I see a divide in society that is only getting wider, making it increasingly difficult to sit on the fence. On the one hand, Bitcoin is one of the best things humanity has seen in a long time. And on the other, it's a gambling environmental disaster. So if you're Tim Cook, if you're Mark Zuckerberg, or if you're Billy from down the road, do you follow the example of pioneers of emerging technologies like Jack Dorsey and Elon Musk? Or do you listen to old school pioneers like Warren Buffett, who didn't invest in Apple until 2017, or Bill Gates, who was perfectly positioned to capitalize on the revolution of the internet and smartphones, and yet failed to. <laughs> Well, you can imagine how their business meetings are going these days. That's just the way of the world right now. And Bitcoin is spreading. And if Bitcoin takes over, we are all in a world of hell. It is unreal. So lastly, just as a personal update, I am trying my own advice that I gave at the end of the last video. And I'm investing in a couple of IDOs, which the space has been performing very, very well lately. The first one is Cellframe. They are only raising a million dollars, so it will be difficult to get in, but there are no discounts for anyone that does invest early. It's a quantum resistant and scalable network that facilitates cross-chain transactions. So imagine wanting to send something from Ethereum to the Binance Smart Chain or to Cardano in the future, Polkadot, and being able to do so. I see this becoming an increasingly desirable thing in the not too distant future. Next up is an IDO on Pokestarter. Their stuff has been doing extremely well lately. I have not yet invested, date is TBD, but I am keeping an eye on it. The name of the IDO is Convergence. It will be so hyped that you will need a DAO community most likely to get a shot at investing, but it's a decentralized exchange built on Polkadot with multi-chain operability and a portion of all transaction fees being paid out to token holders. So think Uni for Uniswap or Cake for PancakeSwap. This may just be the big one for Polkadot. Could be massive, excited to find out. Also, my brother-in-law is an artist. He's been making crypto stuff for me since 2018. He actually designed this jumper. That's, uh, that's Leo. He's got some NFTs up for sale now, if you could check that out. Let me know what you think. That would be really cool. But that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. What's going on, everyone? I'm here today to do a project overview on Megatech. All right, so MGT Solar is a sustainability project that builds, owns, operates, and manages energy storage facilities. Its goal is to make energy clean, green, sustainable, and constantly available. 
They're creating the Megatech Project, a trailblazing energy venture in South Africa. It combines a green sustainable energy solution with a revolutionary storage technology anchored by a dynamic cryptocurrency funding model to address the daily problem of power supply shortages in South Africa. Until now, the storage of energy was not truly cost effective due to the high cost of storage cells and the relatively short lifespan of them. And then on top of that, there's the obstacle of getting prospective energy projects finalized, registered, compliant, and funded. The team feels that their strategic partnerships and their ICO-STO funding model will save a tremendous amount of project costs and completely alleviate the burden of finance fees while ensuring maximum returns to their investors within a short period of time. Their goal is to shorten the time of development from 60 months to 18 months. The whole premise of the project is that there's an energy crisis in South Africa that is massive. There are widespread rolling blackouts as supply falls behind demand, threatening to destabilize the national grid and the country. The issue began sometime around 2007 and continues to this day. The government-owned National Power Utility and Primary Power Generator, ESCOM, and various parliamentarians have stated that these rolling blackouts are due to insufficient generation capacity. With a reserve margin estimated in 8% or below, such load shedding is implemented whenever generating units are taken offline for maintenance, repairs, or for refueling in the case of nuclear units. According to ESCOM and government officials, the solution requires the construction of additional power stations and generators. Energy affordability and security supply is the cornerstone of the progressive development in Africa. There's a lot of logistical issues that coincide with COVID recovery and that have resulted in an economic recession. Also, South Africa needs to meet climate change targets, and that's escalated the energy crisis requiring an energy transition. So let's talk about the token a bit now. Megatech token was created in 2020 and will be on the Apollo FinTech blockchain. This will be a registered security token, and the holders of the token will be given a 60% fractional ownership of the main company, which is MGT Solar, and this fractional ownership will also come with equity and annual dividends. The token will be backed by the actual company itself, which owns solar farms. 3.5 billion tokens will be sold at the value of one cent during the presale, which is going on from now and for about one more week. Then after the presale, the price will go up at the STO launch to 15 cents, and then 30 days after the STO launch, it will go up to 20 cents. Any surplus of tokens that are not sold on the STO platform will be reserved for future projects and developments. Management wallets will be locked in smart contracts for 12 months, meaning that management, aka the team, will not be able to liquidate their tokens for at least a year. As far as for what they're going to do with the funds they raise, 80% of the income of the funds will be allocated to solar power plants. This means that 80% of income will be used for development and infrastructure purposes. And then 20% of the income and funds will be used for marketing purposes and to stay ahead of the technological curve of blockchain tech in general. A strong pro for this token is that it's already been guaranteed to be on a major exchange listing with 200 pairings and millions of dollars worth of daily volume. This will give the token immediate value after the ICO completion. That being said, they haven't stated which exchange that is. They have some pretty strong advisors. Joanne Dean is one. She's the board member and a spokesperson for the South African Energy Storage Association, as well as a managing committee member of the South African Institute of Electrical Engineers, the Energy Storage Chapter. She's got 18 years experience in design and construction of process and flow control plants in the mining sector. And the other one is Arno Boschoff. He's got 23 years of quality management experience in construction and green building projects. He was also appointed as the vice chairman of the South African Quality Institute in February of 2020. So between the two of them, they definitely have the needed experience for this endeavor. The team states that they've already secured off-take agreements from the largest corporations in South Africa, which are bi-power agreements, as well as they've entered into various strategic partnerships with key individuals in the renewable energy industry, including ESCOM, which is the Regional Power Authority, which I touched on earlier. This agreement is for ESCOM to sell the electricity they produce, ensuring a consistent income stream over the next 25 years. They've also contracted one of the leading EPC, or engineering, procurement, and construction technical teams in Africa to ensure their solar plants will be constructed in Southern Africa within the next 60 months. They're confident that additional revenue will also be derived by trading the carbon credits generated by these plants, which will increase profits and dividends for the token holders. Token holders will not only earn an extreme return on investment, but can also contribute to reducing carbon emissions and then, you know, investing in a greener future, which is pretty cool. They're also confident that they're going to be able to change the landscape and set the bar for all future energy projects on the continent. They offer a 10% bonus for purchases during the pre-sale and a referral commission for both the referrer and the referral. 
People who are looking for more info on the project or want to get more involved can join their Telegram communities for the latest updates, for bounty competitions, airdrops, AMA videos, and pretty much anything you can think of. All right, everyone. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and take care.